Welcome to Excel Magic Trick number 672. Hey, if you want to download this workbook and follow along, click on my YouTube channel, then click on my College website link, and you can download this workbook. Hey, uh, this is a response to a post at the Mr. Excel message board. Best place to hang out if you love Excel. Um, this post um, wanted to do this. We have codes and these numbers here. And here are some numbers we're putting in, a 3, a 3, and a 3. There's three threes here and three threes here. But notice, these are sorted and these threes are at the bottom. What we want to do is anytime we want a formula here, anytime we see a 3, this is the first 3, we want to return this first 15 right to there. So we'd put 15, right? And then as we copy our formula down, when it gets to the next 3, here's the second 3 from this list. So then we want to put a 25 here. And then same, this is the third one, so we want a 35. And we want this all done automatically. Here's our desired goal. Here's our desired uh, end result here. Now, in this post, and um, most of the time, and certainly I've done a lot of videos of formulas like this, uh, we, do, we make it an array formula. In essence, what we're doing is we have a single lookup value, a 3, right? But there's duplicates. So we have three duplicates, and we want to return multiple items. So here's uh, the standard way to do that. You use the lookup function index. Since these are, this is an array, these are the values we want to return, that's the range we highlight. Hit the F4 key to lock it, comma. Now row number, no, normally we just put like a an 8, right? And it would take this 15 and put it up here. But we don't want to, we can't just put a single number. We're going to have multiple items and we need to choose. It looks like for 3, we have an 8, a 9, and a 10 row number. So we need to build an array and choose the first one, 8 here then 9, then 10. So we do that with the small. You say the small. Small, we're going to have an array here of all the row numbers. In essence, for the number 3, it'll only show 8, 9, 10. But, and we'll select the k, the first smallest, second smallest, third smallest. So we say if anything in this range, f4, is equal to this, that eliminates all of these other rows, then what do we want for our small? Our ultimately, we're putting row numbers in the index. So we say, hey, row, give me all of those, F4. But that's going to give us 4 to 13. So we subtract row, uh, this one right here. But that's 4 minus 4, which is 0. Oops, I got an F4 here. So we add one back in. Right, that's the value of 2. We don't need a value of false, so we close parentheses. Now we need our k. Now somehow we need a 1 here, but when we get down here, we need to say, hey, k, 2. We'll simply use the count if with an expandable range. Count if. So count if, it needs a range and criteria. But we don't want to highlight the whole range, so we click the first one, um, control, colon. I'm going to click right here on this and then hit the F4 key to lock it. That's our expandable range. This is locked. This is not. So as we copy it down, it expands, comma, and then we'll count this. That will. Th that's the solution for k, uh, 8, or the first smallest, then the third, second smallest, the third smallest. We close parentheses on our small close parentheses on our index. And this is an array formula, so we control shift enter. The array formula comes from this right here. This if function logical test argument is expecting a single true and when you put multiple trues and falses in it, forget it. You got to control shift enter. So control shift enter. All right, now that was useful just to go through not only to uh, see how that formula works, but we're going to relate how that one works to the aggregate. Now, let's um, put this in edit mode, and I'm going to do this piece right here, small, all the way to there. Since that is the small function, there's a new function called aggregate. It has 19 different functions. One of the functions that it, do, it in essence, calculates for is small. Now, just a moment, we'll see that aggregate like index lookup in some product 
has an array argument and it can handle arrays. So that's why we can substitute this in uh, and tell it to do the small function in this location in the formula right here and we won't have to do control shift enter. Now I'm going to um, actually highlight this is the logical test right now notice in this small if construction the logical test comes first and then our row numbers which are what we're ultimately dumping into the index those are the numbers those uh, come second in this construction. Now watch this. I'm going to actually control CC. That opens up, let me do that again, control CC. That opens up the clipboard because we're going to use that in our aggregate and we're going to use this. Again, the order will be reversed. We'll have to put this first and, and the uh, logical test second. Now I'm just going to delete all this and it's nice. We, we saw how the rest of this worked. We're just putting aggregate in where the small was. So aggregate, totally amazing. Uh, a bunch of functions here, 19 functions. I'm going to select 15 for small. Again, there's a great uh, video link up here. I have uh, 11 videos about all the uses of small, um, all the uses of aggregate. Option, this is great. Um, I'm going to type uh, a 6 just because I. I've gotten used to this one here, but a bunch of things you can ignore, and we definitely need to ignore error values because uh, not all the rows are going to be returned, comma, the array. Now, this is where we build, in essence, our two pieces. The numbers are going to come first in this one, so I'm not just going to click, I'm going to actually type in open parentheses, click on this, and then open parentheses. All right, so the first part of this array is are the numbers. Then we divide and then open parentheses and put our logical test. And pretty much if you're returning not not all small uh, not, not all array formulas that use small or large can uh, have aggregate as a substitute. But if you're copying it down and returning multiple items, usually you can. So um, we're taking the rows, dividing it by those. Really what it will do is these will be all the numbers and we're going to divide by a bunch of trues and falses, right? And then only the ones that are true will tell the will uh, provide the number from the row. Now, that right there is array, comma, the count if is going to be our k and it looks like we already have these closed off just fine. Con I'm not going to control shift enter, I'm just going to enter. Notice no curly brackets. Double click and send it down. Boom, it works. This function only works in Excel 2010, though. So most of the times you're not going to be able to use it. But someday, when everyone has, uh, probably we're, when we're five versions ahead, everyone will finally have Excel 2010 or later version, and then we'll be doing this. All right, um, we'll see you next trick.